Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, the second Russian suspect accused of carrying out the Salisbury nerve agent attack has been identified tonight as a military doctor working for Moscow's Secret Service. An investigatory website says the man named as Alexander Petrov is, in fact, Dr. Alexander Mishkin, who is employed by Russia's GRU military intelligence agency. It was the same website, Bellingcat, that revealed the identity of the other Novichok suspect. And I'm Alexander Petrov. These are your real names. Yes, those are our real names. No, it's not, according to the website Bellingcat, which claims tonight to have amassed the real identity of the second Salisbury suspect known as Alexander Petrov. It says it's uncovered new information about his past and claims that not only is he a GRU agent, but a trained military doctor. It claims this is his passport issued in 2001 using his real name, his real age and his real place of birth. His real name is Dr. Alexander Mishkin. He graduated from one of Russia's elite military medical academies and was trained as a military doctor for the Russian Naval Armed Forces. Mishkin was recruited by the GRU Russian intelligence and by 2010 had relocated to Moscow. Until early September 2014, Mishkin's registered home address in Moscow was Koroshovskia Shossa 76B, the address of the headquarters of the GRU. The report also says Mishkin used his new identity to travel to Kiev in December 2013 when demonstrators blockaded Ukrainian government buildings demanding the resignation of the president. Last week, Dutch officials said they'd foiled an attempt to hack the chemical weapons watchdog in the Netherlands, which was investigating the use of Novichok in Salisbury. Suspected GRU agents arrived in Amsterdam days earlier. Today, the Russian foreign minister responded. He said, there was nothing secret about the trip of the Russian specialist to The Hague in April of this year. This was a routine trip. Poisoning in Salisbury and humiliation in Moscow. These new claims are unverified, but come from a reliable source. The reputation of Russian tradecraft was tarnished but it's only one victim of what happened here. Rohit Katru, News at 10. Now, the identity of the second man suspected of attempting to murder former Russian spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia emerged tonight. Media organisations, including The Telegraph and the Bellingcat website, reported that the man whose passport claimed he was Alexander Petrov is, in fact, a GRU operative called Dr Alexander Mishkin. I'm joined now by phone by Christo Grozhev from the Bellingcat Investigations team. Very good evening to you. Tell us about um, Alexander Mishkin, Christo. I would be happy to, and yet I have to be a little cautious of the fact that uh, we only published the sort of the teaser version of our report, and tomorrow at 1 p.m. UK time we'll be publishing the full report, which contains much more information. Um, but uh, given that, what we know and what we've disclosed is that he is an actual trained military doctor. He graduated um, in 2002, 2003. If we go back to his childhood, we'll find something extremely interesting. He grew up in a, a remote village in the north of Russia, um, which has less than 1,000 uh, residents. The village is permafrosted and constantly covered in snow. One might remember this person's um, allegations on television that he decided to come back from Salisbury because uh, there was some slush there, but actually it's a, it's, a, it's a village that lives in slush. The village never had a road. It has no road access to the rest of Russia. It's an, it's an incredible place to, to visit, which you can do only by train. And that's what our reporters did last night, because we sent them over there for final validation of our findings. Right. Can you give, um, us, so yes, can you give us some idea sure. of how you, how you went about finding him? How did you, how did you identify him? Uh, it took about five weeks, I would say. Um, well, we, we started essentially the same time we started working on Chepiga, the other person. Um, we had much less to go on because um, we found absolutely no 
uh, online references to this person uh, under his real or assumed name. There, were, there was not even a, a, a school that boasted about him. So we started with, with very little. Uh, what we first we wasted about two weeks trying to find him in the same way using the same logic and approach that we used for Chepiga, um, on the assumption that it would be a completely different uh, personality than than his real one. Then we remembered that, that in the previous investigation that we did a few years back on another GRU agent, that was uh, Colonel Shishmakov from the GRU who was allegedly involved with the uh, attempt to overthrow the Montenegrin government, uh, that person had only one part of his name and identity changed. Only the family name had been changed from right. his real one. The birth date re remained the same, uh, place of birth remained the same. So we decided to give that approach a try. Okay. And in this and, case, uh, in this case, so the name is the first name, is this, it hasn't been changed. Look, just very briefly, Christo, um, yeah. how big a blow is it, do you think, that these guys have both now been identified? I mean, does it just it presumably stop them doing anything for the GRU again, does it? Well, I think that's that, that's a given, but I don't think that's the real uh, outcome. And the, first of all, Putin has been caught in an open light twice. There's uh, there's absolutely no way that he didn't know that he was not informed that these are GRU agents, uh, officers of, of that high caliber. Uh, but more importantly, uh, Russia's next line of defense, which we always expected would have been, well, fine, you caught two spies, but they were not there to poison anybody. They were there for a, a regular reconnaissance mission. That That's what spies do. Given that one of them is a trained medical doctor, um, and the only explanation for the presence of such a qualified person on a team of two uh, can be at best uh, defensive in terms of uh, protecting uh, the, the other members of the team from possible blowback from, from application of poison. Christo. I don't think there's going to be an easy argument to make. Christo, Christo Grosje, thanks very much for talking to us. Thank you. Thanks.